the entrance antiphon, O Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you, be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O God, my Savior. The Mass this morning is being offered for Suzanne Boudreaux. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you all. Let us come before the Lord now to confess our sins and so to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as your fellow workers, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold now is the day of salvation. We cause no one to stumble in anything in order that no fault may be found with our ministry. On the contrary, in everything we commend ourselves as ministers of God through much endurance in afflictions, hardships, constraints, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, vigils, fasts, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, in the Holy Spirit, in genuine love, in truthful speech, in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness at the right and at the left, through glory and dishonor, insult and praise. We are treated as deceivers and yet are truthful, as unrecognized and yet acknowledged, as dying, and behold, we live, as chastised, and yet not put to death, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet enriching many, as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial song, the Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. The Lord has made known his salvation. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has remembered his salvation. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song. Sing praise. The Lord has remembered his salvation. My feet is your word, a light to my path. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. The Gospel of the Lord. When we hear Jesus saying, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, he is uh, quoting from the Mosaic Law, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 21, which says that if someone hurts you, uh, you can avenge an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, a hand for a hand, and a foot for a foot. It wasn't actually a, a license to revenge, but it was an attempt to put a ceiling on the acts of retaliation in a time of great violence, when if someone did something to hurt a person, that person might respond by killing all of their family and burning down their house and village. So it was about putting a ceiling or some limits on revenge. But Jesus takes the law, which we call lex talionis, the law of, of retaliation or revenge, and he flips it upside down and says, don't respond at all, don't retaliate at all, no vengeance at all when someone hurts you. Instead, he says, uh, if they strike you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. And we know that Jesus gave the example of living this uh, in his final arrest when he uh, turned the other cheek and did not oppose any of the violence that was hurled at him. We had a most amazing modern day example of living this gospel. I think it was about 15 years ago uh, at an Amish schoolhouse in a very small village, an Amish village in Pennsylvania. A crazy uh, murderer broke into this one room schoolhouse where uh, Amish children, it was Amish girls, as I recall, they were you know, very young, maybe first grade through sixth grade. They were being instructed and he broke into the schoolhouse and he, he killed most of the girls. He tried to kill everybody, but some wound up being only injured and survived. But it was a horrific, this was the lead story in the national news for a few days. But the story changed from you know, the, the horror of this to the disbelief of the forgiveness the Amish Christian people decided that they would not let this man's act of violence turn them into a vengeant people. And so they constantly, in their interviews, they constantly said, we have already forgiven this man and moved on. We're very sad for the loss of our children and our neighbor's children, but we're moving on and this will not define us and it will not drag us down on forgiveness. And as a matter of fact, the Amish people took up a massive collection for the murderer's wife and children who were left behind, the widow and children. And an incredible example of turning the other cheek. So I can't think of one more profound uh, in, and certainly in the, the United States that got more uh, good press than this. A wonderful example of what Jesus asks of us. So when someone hurts us, the natural first reaction is going to be, how can I retaliate? What can I say to make it even? What can I do? But as we think about this particular uh, instruction of Jesus and the model of Jesus, let's quickly go to the second step, which is, Lord, how can I be nonviolent in my response? Now, uh, some of the saints say that when you're nonviolent in your response, you really bring uh, a great uh, weight upon the person who has committed the hurt. 
it kind of calls them, really, really calls them out for what they have done. It can bring a great shame upon them, a great embarrassment, a good sense of guilt, and then it can cause them to change their behavior from violent ways. So, uh, Lord, help us to live this message of uh, nonviolent resistance to violence. Help us to bear the sufferings, as Jesus says, offer no resistance to one who is evil. Help us to bear the evil and the sufferings. And so, finally, help to bring about peace and reconciliation in our world. Please stand for our morning prayers. For the church, may the Lord look graciously upon us as we take the good news of Jesus Christ to all parts of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in efforts to protect the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of oppression or racism, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our morning prayer, prayer for protection and healing from coronavirus. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. Come to our aid in the midst of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Heal those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health. Bring those who have died from the virus to eternal peace. Protect doctors, nurses, and healthcare professionals as they help the sick. Allow the vaccine to be successful in halting the spread of the virus. Be with leaders of nations. Give them wisdom to act with true concern for their people. Grant us peace in this time of uncertainty and challenge. We pray this in your most holy name, Jesus. For you are our loving and healing Lord, our Lady of Promise Succor, St. Joseph, St. Francis Xavier, St. Rock, and St. Rosalie, pray for us. Amen. Our family prayer. Loving and faithful God, through the years the people of our Archdiocese have appreciated the prayers and love of Our Lady of Prom Succor in times of war, disaster, epidemic, and illness. We come to you, Father, with Mary, our mother, and ask you to help us in the battle of today against violence, murder, and racism. We implore you to give us your wisdom that we may build a community founded on the values of Jesus, which gives respect to the life and dignity of all people. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith. Bless and protect our youth that they may be peacemakers of our time. Give consolation to those who have lost loved ones through violence. Hear our prayer and give us the perseverance to be a voice for life and human dignity in our community. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us. Mother Henrietta Leal, pray for us that we may be a holy family. And let's offer one prayer to the, for the bishops as they gather this week for their annual spring meeting and consider some important topics for the governance of the church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our Bishop, his fellow bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, option two. Holy Father, keep in your name those you have given me, that they may be one as we are one, says the Lord.
Let us pray. At this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.